Chapter 846, Drunken Dragon Powder Zhang Xinyue only stayed for a short time in presidential suite in 1208. After saying everything she needed to convey, she left in a hurry and came to suite 1206. When she saw her older sister Zhang Xinyue's red eyes and her despondent state, she felt distressed despite having mentally prepared for it. Xinyue, why did you come here? Although Zhang Xinyue was in a depressed mood, she was still surprised upon seeing her young sister catch up with her in Qinglin County and appear before her. After she asked, however, she suddenly realized that Zhang Xiaoyu must have called her younger sister about her situation here, or else she wouldn't rush to come. Zhang Xinyue gently grabbed Zhang Xinyue's hand and softly said, Sis, please let everything go. I can't. Please give it some time, all right? Zhang Xinyue sighed gloomily. But she immediately shifted the topic to avoid causing her sister more agony. Sis, take a look at your face now. How will you participate in the opening ceremony of that villa complex tomorrow? How about I take your place? No can do. Those people have paid me a lot. I may be not in a good shape, but I can adjust my condition by then, refused Zhang Xinya hurriedly. What they want is your fame, for you to appear there. We're almost identical both in height and appearance, so there won't be a problem if I attend the show instead of you. Zhang Xinyue shook her head and said, Besides, do you think my singing is inferior to yours? You sing really well and no one can tell who is who unless they are particularly familiar with us, but, said Zhang Xinyue. Sis, can you please listen to me first? Zhang Xinyue interrupted her and said, Just have a look at your eyes now. They are all red and swollen and you're in a depressed state. If you were still to attend the opening ceremony tomorrow, some unfavorable situation will definitely occur. Let's talk seriously, shall we? If a situation occurs while you're in the middle of a show, it's going to have a big impact on your reputation. The gossip news will be very eager to get the scoop and will cover your scandal. Instead of giving them a chance to fabricate gossips and slander you, it would be better for me to take over your show for this event. This, Zhang Xinya hesitated. All right, let's just decide as such. Zhang Xinyue smiled and said, That's right, have you had lunch? I drove over all night long, so I'm starving and need to fill my empty belly. I'll call someone from the hotel restaurant to send the meals now, said Zhang Xinya quickly. The next day. When Tang Xiao had just finished breakfast and came to the lobby of the Five Star Sunbao Hotel, Zhang Xinyue, who wore a mask, sunglasses, and a black windbreaker, stood in the corner of the rest area with Zhang Xiaoyu. Once they saw him, they quickly came to greet him. You are. Tang Xiao was able to distinguish Zhang Xinya and Zhang Xinyue if he carefully observed them, but at this moment, he was having trouble since the woman was currently wearing a mask and sunglasses. Mr. Tang, let's go together since you'll also attend the opening ceremony of the Golden Goblet Emperor Ga's Villa Complex, said Zhang Xinyue with a smile. It seems you really have a way to convince your sister, huh, replied Tang Xiao and smiled back. But if you want to go with me, you'll have to follow me and seeing my friend first since I'll go with him later. You have friends here? Zhang Xinyue was surprised. What's wrong? Can't I have friends here? asked Tang Xiao with a smile. I don't mean that. I'm just curious why you came to Qinglin County. Zhang Xinyue quickly waved and said, All right then. It's fine if you take me to go see your friend. We all can directly go to where the show is being held. Tang Xiao looked hesitant for a moment before he nodded and said, If so, let's do that. Zhang Xinyue didn't take her sister's bodyguard's car but took Tang Xiao's car instead, followed by Zhang Xiaoyu, who was now her temporarily personal assistant and took the front seat. Big guy, drive slowly. Xinyue big sis is prone to motion sickness. Moa just squinted a glance at Zhang Xiaoyu and started the car without uttering a word then quickly drove toward Wang Tao's residence. Ten minutes later, the car stopped in front of the gate of Wang Tao's residence. 
As Tang Xiao and Zhang Xinyue came to the courtyard, Wang Tao was already outside in a bubbly mood. Huh? When Wang Tao saw Zhang Xinyue, his eyes turned round like beads. Only after Zhang Xinyue came to him with Tang Xiao did he finally come back to his senses, as if he was awakening from a dream. He stretched his hand out in a hurry and said, Hello, Miss Xinya, I'm Wang Tao. Wang Xiuegang is my father, and the villa complex Golden Goblet Emperor Gaz is real estate developed by our family. There was a disgusted look gleaming in Zhang Xinyue's eyes, though it was concealed well. She didn't shake hands with Wang Tao but turned to look at Tang Xiao. Wang Tao's lecherous nature and his womanizer conduct was something that Tang Xiao had long heard of, so he said with a smile, My, my, you ignore me directly when you see a bell, huh? And you told me that we are good friends. Wang Tao stared blankly and immediately took back his hand before letting out a hollow, dry laugh. He looked at Tang Xiao and said, Please don't get offended, big bro, Tang. Everyone loves a beautiful woman, and this is my first time seeing Miss Xinya, so feeling attracted to her is kinda normal, no? Anyhow, let's go and have a chat inside. Let's spare the chat inside, shall we? Just use the time to take your herbal medication. Besides, we need to rush to the Golden Goblet Emperor Gauze Villa Complex. If my guess is correct, they should be prepared there, said Tang Xiao. Wang Tao thought for a moment and replied, All right then. We can still have a chat on the way there. With that said, however, he still couldn't help but be overcome by his urge to glance at Zhang Xinyue before making a quick turn to run into his villa. Zhang Xinyue took back her gaze from Wang Hao's back and whispered, I don't like him. His eyes are full of lust. This person is not a good man. He just said that everyone has the heart to love beautiful women, didn't he have said Tang Xiao indifferently. Who makes your appearance look so beautiful? It's normal for people to look at you more and more. But as you said it, this brat is indeed a notch more lascivious than normal people. Just keep a distance from him if you don't like him. I'll keep a distance from him, but I have to correct your statement, mind you. Zhang Xinyua nodded. What statement? Tang Xiao was puzzled. Everyone has the heart to love a beautiful woman, but this sentence proves that you're wrong because I'm standing next to a different kind of man, said Zhang Xinyue. Cough, cough, Tang Xiao coughed and no longer touched the topic. The villa complex Golden Goblet Emperor Gauz. The winding road was very wide and was connected to the road with a magnificent gate at the foothill of the highest peak on the outskirts of Qingqing Mountain. The gate was more than 30 meters in height and width, while more than 10 security guards in black uniforms were checking the passes on traveling cars. At present, two middle-aged men were sitting on a black Buick sedan while looking at the driver's registration number and the car's information. After taking the Buick sedan slowly into the gate, one of them slowly said, Wang Xuegang's eldest brother is the deputy abbot of Qingcheng Monastery, a real power figure of the school. Since we're going to uproot the Qingcheng Monastery, let's just kill him in passing. Another middle-aged man with a hideous scar on his cheek squinted his eyes and said, You're right. Six of our brothers died to the hands of the Qingcheng Monastery, whereas us four kinda escaped by a fluke. Now that we're here for revenge, let's play it bigger and kill them all. But there are too many people and a lot more eyes mixed in with them, so we'll need to carefully consider the number and how to do it. There's no need to think it over. I brought some drunken dragon powder. What? Scarface gasped in shock, Bai Xin, did you entrust Miao Wenong to buy drunken dragon powder from that foreign toxicologist? And you even brought it here? Don't tell me you wanna use the drunken dragon power on these normal people too? It's too wasteful. You're just killing a chicken using an oxen's butcher knife. I know it's a waste killing Wang Shuegang with drunken dragon powder, but I won't use too much of it, sneered Bai Xin. As long as I put a tenth of the drunken dragon powder for today's banquet, that damned Wang Shuegang will drink a pot of them. Even if he's lucky enough not to die, too many people will die here and bring him great trouble. <laughs> 
Then we'll send some people in disguise as family members of the deceased to seek Wang Shuegang out for revenge. We'll evacuate immediately after stabbing him to death so that it won't attract the attention of outsiders. What a scheme! Scarface murmured, if that's the case, not only will we kill Wang Shuegang, but will also ruin his business. It seems that Wang Shuegang and his family are doomed to fall apart and die. Bai Jin nodded and looked northward before coldly saying, it's been 24 years that we brothers fell from that cliff. Yet, we actually had a fortuitous encounter that made us cultivators. We successfully become in-name disciples of the Poison Dao Master because of our good foundation. 24 years of penance and self-torture, all to avenge ourselves and cancel out our hatred. This time, we'll completely annihilate the Qingqing Monastery's people. We can be at ease with that. Scarface sneered, all the experts we have trained these years have already climbed up the mountain ahead of time. They will immediately kill the Qingqing Monastery's people once they receive our orders. Inside the villa complex of Golden Goblet Emperor Gauze, Wang Shuegang was waiting for the arrival of two distinguished guests inside the spacious office, on the second floor of the three-storied sales center with a face full of expectation. He had invited many people for this occasion, including the real power figures of Qinglin County's government, department authorities, some city officials who held high office, and naturally, some of his cliques in the business community. Even Zhao Xianming, the chairman from the city heavy industry group, had promised to attend the event in person. Boss, Boss Zhao is coming. A middle-aged woman strode into the room and looked at Wang Shuegang who was standing in front of the window. Wang Shuegang turned and nodded as he replied, I'll come out to greet him immediately. Also, clean up VIP room 3. I'll bring Boss Zhao over there. All right. Zhao Xianming was a big-bellied middle-aged man. His complexion was rather pale due to his drinking and womanizing habits, yet he was also the big boss of the largest company in the city with an extraordinary bearing, contrary to what might be expected. At this time, he was with several company owners at his side. As he saw Wang Shuegang come to greet him, he smiled and said, It's been a few months since the last time we met, Brother Wang. Yet, you're still this spirited. That's right, today is the opening sale ceremony of your Golden Goblet Emperor Gauz Villa Complex, isn't it? Well, since you can expect a lot of banknotes flying into your pockets soon, it's natural that you'd be a spirited and happy man, right, Brother Wang? Come, I'd like to congratulate you ahead of time. Chapter 847, Becoming Well Known Yet Again Wang Shuegang might be the richest man in Qinglin County with industry spread out the city, but there was still a big gap in comparison to the billionaire Zhao Xianming. Hence, he still wore a respectful attitude and replied modestly, Brother Zhao is kidding me, I'm nothing but a small businessman, still very far from you. But still, I'm very grateful that you could honor me in taking time out of your busy schedule to join us. Anyhow, the tea has been served in the VIP room, so shall we head there and have a chat? All right, said Zhang Shuaming with a smile. After the two men were done with the pleasantries and came to the VIP room, Zhao Xianming asked with a smile, You've created such a big scene for the opening sale ceremony of your Golden Goblet Emperor Gauze Complex Villa, Brother Wang. I met some business owners when I just came here and I heard that you also spent quite a sum to invite the big star Zhang Xinya didn't you? Yeah, they are some friends I've invited and came to give me face, brother, said Wang Shuegang with a smile. As for Zhang Xinya, I did invite her to Qinglin County to ask her to sing at the opening ceremony. That's quite amazing, brother Wang. Zhao Xianming squinted his eyes and sighed. My company held a welcome party for our new blood last year and I tried to invite her to perform at the event, with quite a large amount of money. It was a pity that she refused the invitation. I really can't compare with you in this regard. Compare my ass, cursed Wang Shuegan inwardly. He had known Zhao Xianming for many years. This fellow was rich and all, but very stingy and a miser in nature. It was surely that the contract fee he offered for Zhang Xinya was so low that it would be strange for her to come. Whereas he had spent literally millions for this occasion. 
he had got all the help could muster from his network before he was successful in inviting Zhang Xinya. After the small chit-chat of pleasantries, the door was knocked and Wang Xuegang's middle-aged female secretary entered and reported in a low voice, Boss, young master Wang has just come along with Mr. Tang and the superstar Zhang Xinya. Wang Xuegang's expression moved. It was rather normal for his son to come along with Tang Xiao since they were acquaintances, but how come Zhang Xinya came with them? As he thought up to there, he then looked at Zhao Xianming and smilingly said, I'll have to excuse myself, brother Zhao. I need to go to receive some guests and I'll introduce you to a great personage later. Zhao Xianming blankly stared and stopped Wang Xuegang as he asked, You're just piquing my interest, so don't leave me dry, brother Wang? Who exactly is this great man? Soon, brother Zhao. You'll know about him soon, immediately replied Wang Xuegang with a mysterious smile. Having said that, he quickly left with the middle-aged female secretary. Just as he walked to the staircase, he saw Tang Xiao and Zhang Xinya come upstairs along with his son, Wang Tao. Boss Tang, Miss Zhang. You two seem to have already known each other from your mannerisms, greeted Wang Xuegang with a smile. We have indeed known each other for some time, though we didn't expect to meet in Qinglin County, said Tang Xiao. Wang Xuegang quickly understood and smilingly said, since you already know each other, it will save me from introducing you two to each other. I'll take the honor to escort you to the VIP lounge so you two can have some rest. The ceremony is in about 30 minutes and I will depend on you both later. Well, I'm just attending to have some fun, Boss Wang, said Tang Xiao. There's no need for you to say that I will help you with the event, no? Besides, it's Shenya who'll sing, so there's no need for me to get involved. Well, I still have to make money for you, boss. So, there's nothing I can do but tire myself out, interjected Zhang Xinyue with a smile. Boss? Wang Xuegang blanked out with disbelief in his eyes and asked with a surprised yet amazed expression, Miss Zhang, you just said that. Boss Tang is your company's. Small shareholder, interjected Tang Xiao quickly. A friend of mine invited me a while back, and I was kinda unable to refuse him regarding investing some money. Don't listen to her joke, Boss Wang. Wang Xuegang shivered inside a few times. Although Tang Xiao's comment was light, he knew the people, including their background, of who established the entertainment company where Zhang Xinya worked under. Yet, it was unexpected that Tang Xiao and these people were friends. Friends enough that they were able to drag this young man out to invest some of his money, meaning that they must have a very good relationship. Maybe, Tang Xiao also has an official background. The thought crossed Wang Xuegang's mind. His face suddenly beamed with a smile and he exclaimed, You're young and yet very promising, Boss Tang. I just hope that you can give guidance and help to my son since you two are friends. It's only natural for friends to help each other out. Tang Xiao nodded. After some perfunctory pleasantries, they came to the VIP lounge. As the tea and dessert were delivered, Wang Xuegang smilingly said, Please have a chat here, ladies and gentlemen. I still need to greet other guests. Tao, serve Mr. Tang and Miss Zhang with the best hospitality and be sure to satisfy all their needs. I understand, father, replied Wang Tao as he quickly glanced at Zhang Xinya. Time flew by quickly, and the opening sale ceremony finally arrived. Zhang Xinyue, who was now the host and the guest star who would sing in the event to replace her older sister, Zhang Xinya, was cheered by the jam-packed crowd as she came to the entrance of the sales center. It was literally the effect of a superstar as there were at least several thousands of people coming here. Zhang Xinyue was not her sister, Zhang Xinya, yet she didn't look to be anxious in the slightest and took the microphone with a smile. Welcome everyone. After her speech, Zhang Xinyue handed the mic to Wang Xuegang next to her. As the owner and developer of the Golden Goblet Emperor Ga's Villa Complex, he began his speech, well, I shall not repeat what Miss Xinya just said, everyone. But I'd like to convey my gratitude for the support you all have given. 
Also, I especially would like to introduce the distinguished guests who have honored us with their presence. Next to me is the deputy mayor of the city. This one is the owner of auspicious gold group, Zhao Xianming, from our city. This is the county official, the chief of economic development of our Qinglin County. And finally, I'd like to introduce you to a very distinguished guest we have here. As Wang Shuigang spoke up to there, he immediately made a pause to make everyone guess, yet, at this moment, the several thousands of people were surprised since they could tell that this special VIP was probably extraordinary from Wang Shuigang's expression alone. Even Zhao Xianming, as well as the city officials and the deputy mayor, were somewhat surprised. Wang Shuigang walked to the very edge of the line and came to Tang Xiao. He amicably pulled Tang Xiao back to the place where he just stood and excitedly said, This man is a guest from afar, the owner of the very famous and magnificent Tang Corporation, Mr. Tang. He also has another identity as the kind-hearted and highly skilled miracle-working doctor, the young divine doctor, Tang Xiao. Tang Xiao? In that instant, a burst of exclamation came from the crowd, including a surprise from the deputy mayor and Xiao Xianming. The reputation of Magnificent Tang Corporation was growing more resounding each day. It was at the point that they were known to everyone in the country. To think that its big boss, a great personage, turned out to have come here. It was very unexpected. More so than that, nearly everyone presented here had heard about this young divine doctor, Tang Xiao, a figure who had been the hot topic of major media for years and even won the respect of countless people. Oh my god. I didn't expect that Tang Xiao, the young divine doctor of the Star City Chinese Medical Hospital, is unexpectedly the owner of Magnificent Tang Corporation. The richest family of Qinglin County is truly worth the name, to think they can achieve such an amazing feat like inviting a great celebrity like divine Dr. Tang to come here. This is big news. My life can be considered to not be in vain since I was able to see such a revered and honorable guru. I'm so fortunate to come here today, else, how could I possibly be able to see such an amazing great man? This is truly inspiring. I never expected that the big boss of Magnificent Tang Corporation is so young, and yet is also the famous young divine doctor of Chinese medicine. He's my idol, you know. Amazing. Tang Xiao could only force a wry smile inwardly as he saw the excited faces below the stage. He came here for the red silk flower and he must show his face in public yet again. Both of his identities were even introduced at the same time. This literally barred him from staying low-key even though he wanted to. All right, for the next part. I invite Boss Tang to have a speech for us here, said Wang Shuigang smilingly. Boss Wang, isn't this out of the line with rules, said Tang Xiao quickly, besides, there are city leaders, county officials, and distinguished people from the business community here. For me to speak here is just rather. Zhao Xianming was the local's richest and most powerful man and was a very proud man to the bone. Only a handful of people he could see eye to eye with and took a liking to only a few. But he was actually a genuine admirer of Tang Xiao. Not only was it because Tang Xiao was the owner of Magnificent Tang Corporation, but also due to his achievements in Chinese medicine. Therefore, Zhao Xianming took a step forward and said with a beaming smile, You've come from afar, Boss Tang, so you are our most honored guest. If you're not qualified to say a few words, I'm afraid none of us here dare to speak. Tang Xiao smiled and shook his head. Ah, your boss Zhao. Since you said so, then I'll borrow some great courage to speak a few words. I feel very fortunate to be able to attend the opening sale ceremony of the Golden Goblet Emperor Gauze Villa Complex, since I've been given a chance to get acquainted with these many friends. I'm very happy myself and while speaking here, I would like to say my sincere wish that the opening ceremony of this villa complex will result in complete success. I hope the villas here will be very popular and be liked by everybody here and you are interested in buying them. That's all I can say, thank you. Wang Shuigang received the microphone Tang Xiao handed him and said with excitement, with the auspicious words from Mr. Tang, 
I'm now announcing that the Golden Goblet Emperor Gobel Villa Complex is now open for public purchase. We are pleased to invite all the friends and guests who are interested in buying the villa of their choice to visit our sales center. Also, I'd like to invite all the guests who ordered a villa in the morning to come to attend the lunch banquet we'll be holding at 12 o'clock. There we will appreciate the passionate songs that will be sung by our famous star singer, Miss Zhang Xinya. Shortly after, Wang Shuigang and everyone else came back from the sales center to the VIP lounge building. A lot of people came to visit Tang Xiao because of the exposure of his identity, causing him to exchange greetings with them. After which, he quietly slipped away to the roof with Wang Tao and seized his chance to have leisure time. Your father is truly excellent at business, said Tang Xiao after he lit up a cigarette and sat cross-legged on the roof smoking. However excellent his business wisdom is, he can't be compared to you, big brother Tang, replied Wang Tao with a smile. You know, the name of your company, Magnificent Tang Corporation, is like a blasting thunder that resounded in everyone's ears, including me. You also saw how fast my dad changed his expression and attitude the moment he learned of your identity, right? <laughs> Tang Shou responded with a chuckle. The two men chatted for a long time afterward. Only when the time denoted 12 sharp in the afternoon did they finally come down from the roof and go to the hall provided for the lunch feast. Chapter 848 The Savior the hall for the lunch banquet was set up in the property management area. Nearly 100 guests had already taken a seat when Tang Xiao's group came in. The staff directly took them to the table at the very center where Wang Xueigang had been waiting for a long time. The latter then immediately got up and smilingly said, Boss Tang, Miss Zhang, please take a seat. Zhang Xinyue took a seat gracefully, but Tang Xiao didn't immediately sit down. He had faintly smelled a familiar scent when he had just entered the hall, but he couldn't remember what it was immediately. He took a glance around and found that the nearly 100 guests were having a merry time, yet he couldn't help but crease his brows deeply. He hadn't yet discovered the source of the scent, but it somehow made him faintly vigilant inside, as if his sixth sense found something amiss, causing him to feel the looming danger. Something wrong, Boss Tang? With a surprised yet strange expression, Wang Shuigang looked at Tang Xiao with inquiry and suspicious eyes. Tang Xiao was silent for a short while before he slowly took a seat. Then he shook his head and said, It's nothing, I just smelled a familiar scent. Wang Shuigang couldn't help but laugh and said after taking a seat, Mr. Tang feels a kind of familiar feeling with something here. That means that you have taken a liking to my place. If so, I'll reserve several villas of my Golden Goblet Emperor Gauze Villa Complex. You can pick the one you like as a present for your support in coming here. Never mind it, but thanks for your good intention, Mr. Wang. Tang Xiao shook his head. If anything, I can only stay in this place for a short time, so I have no time to occupy it even if I have a villa here. Wang Shuigang smilingly nodded and no longer continued the topic. A short while after, Zhang Xinya, who sat next to Tang Xiao, was invited to the temporary stage. She sang three songs for all the guests. Her voice was very beautiful, and even though her singing technique was slightly different from her older sister, Zhang Xinya, nobody could tell since there were no skilled musicians among the audience. As the singing session ended, other extra singers came on stage and Zhang Xinyue returned to Tang Xiao's side and sat down again. However, there was something different in the looks of her eyes, as she whispered when no one noticed them, what happened, Tang Xiao? I can tell that you were somewhat distracted when you came here. Did you smell a particular scent, asked Tang Xiao with a frown? A scent or fragrance? You also said to Mr. Wang that you smelled a familiar scent a while ago, said Zhang Xinyue. But I didn't smell any. If anything, it's maybe because the cold dish was just delivered, so you probably smelled it because your sense of smell is too sharp? That's absolutely not it. Tang Xiao shook his head and said, There was the scent when we just entered the lunch banquet hall. The scent has a very strong medicinal herb fragrance, and I usually can tell the herbs used in a medicinal herb soup. 
I don't know what happened or why I can't tell what the medicinal herb is, just that there is a very familiar feeling to that scent. How come it's so bizarre? Zhang Xinyue was surprised. Tang Xiao was silent for a moment but the vigilance he felt inside was getting stronger. After that moment of silence and exchange of toasts from everyone at the table, and just as he was about to find an excuse to wander around, his expression suddenly changed and his eyes instantly shifted towards the hall entrance. There were more than a dozen staff there carrying the stews, and the scent was getting stronger as they approached. The scent was even drilling into his nostrils even without inhaling it. Do you smell it? Tang Xiao turned to look at Zhang Xinyue and asked in a low voice. What smell? Zhang Xinyue asked back as he looked at Tang Xiao with a confused face, what exactly did you smell? Is it the familiar scent you mentioned before? No, why don't I smell anything? Tang Xi's expression changed and he abruptly got up. He quickly blocked the path of the staff who delivered the dishes. Whereas nearly 100 guests in the hall were surprised and turned silent, as he asked, Can I taste this stew first? Uh... What? The staff knew Tang Xiao's identity but was at a loss that the famous divine doctor Tang Xiao would make such a bizarre request. Wang Shuegang didn't know what happened but he strode up and came to Tang Xiao's side to ask, What's going on, Mr. Tang? I have to taste this stew first, said Tang Xiao. Mr. Tang, even if you're starving, there's no need for you to be this ardent, right, said Wang Shuegang with a smile. I'll send more pots for you if you like this stew later. Tang Xiao shook his head and opened the casserole lid. His heart trembled as he instantly smelled the scent of some medicinal herbs from the billowing mist of vapor. Black Zen seeds, carrion reed, scorpion fruit. Tang Xiao's complexion abruptly changed and he exclaimed, This dish is poisonous. What? Everyone in the entire banquet hall was shocked and got up from their seat, whereas disbelief covered Wang Shuegang's face after hearing Tang Xiao's exclamation, and he spoke hastily, Are you perhaps making a mistake, Mr. Tang? How come this dish is poisonous? I invited all the chefs today from the county town, there's no way they would poison people. Zhang Xinyue quickly ran to Tang Xiao's side and said, Don't talk irresponsibly like that, Tang Xiao. Can you really judge that the stew is poisonous? Yeah, you can't make a joke about this stuff, big brother Tang, added Wang Tao who ran over. Killing intent gleamed inside Tang Xiao's eyes as he coldly said, I smelled this familiar scent right as I entered this luncheon hall. I was not sure where the scent came from, but I've finally figured it out now. It's the scent from the stew in front of all of you. Black Zen seed is a very poisonous plant that grows in chilling in ground. Just a grain of this seed provides enough poison to kill a whale. Carrion reed is a plant that grows on decaying corpses, especially from the heart. To make this carrion reed grow, it needs to be watered down with blood every seven days for seven weeks straight. The scorpion fruit contains a highly potent poison. It is grayish-black in color and somewhat similar in shape to the scorpion. The fruit grows in extremely harsh cold places. As Tang Xiao explained up to there, he gripped his fist and was silent for more than 10 seconds before continuing, these three highly toxic substances can be used as materials to concoct a medicinal poison that is enough to kill hundreds of people, but there should be dozens more highly toxic herbs mixed in the stew as well. However, the most terrible thing is not these herbs, but, the blood from the aquatic dragon's heart. Isn't what you just said way too mysterious, Big Brother Tang, asked Wang Tao incredulously. Let alone saying that those are poisonous plants I've never heard of, but that blood of an aquatic dragon's heart alone is impossible to exist. Where can one even find such an aquatic dragon in this world? Tang Xiao shot him an apathetic look and said, the fact that you've never seen nor heard of it doesn't mean that the aquatic dragon doesn't exist. I've read about this poison in ancient medical records and learned about its name, drunken dragon powder. I can tell you that if even a drop of drunken dragon powder were to be mixed into a bowl of water and poured into dozens of casserole stews, you will be able to poison everyone here now. Whiz. 
Everyone's expression in the luncheon hall suddenly turned very nasty, and they watched the casseroles in the hands of the more than a dozen staffers as though they were looking at horrifying vipers. Go and find an animal, whether it's a cat, dog, chicken, duck or sheep, ordered Tang Xiao with a heavy voice. Hurry up. All right. A staffer hurriedly ran after hearing the order. Without much effort, he brought a live chicken and sheep. Take a spoonful of stew and stuff it into their mouths, said Tang Xiao. All right. Several staffers quickly gathered and poured a spoonful of soup into the mouths of the chicken and sheep. Then, they loosened them as per Tang Xiao's order. Two minutes later, Wang Tao, who watched the chicken and the sheep asked with a confused face, aren't they just fine? Wang Shuigang also hurriedly asked, you just used them to test this whether this stew is poisonous, right? They are just fine. Tang Xiao didn't speak at all but kept staring at the chicken and the sheep on the ground. Half a minute later, the chicken that had tried to run away suddenly fell to the floor. What? Blood is flowing out from its mouth. Also, look at its eyes, how can they turn bloodshot, screamed some people in panic. Instantly, everyone felt a chill run down their whole being. Fear filled their faces as they watched the convulsing chicken that finally died. After seeing what happened to the chicken, Tang Xiao focused his eyes on the sheep. After a minute passed, the animal slowly fell to the floor and died after convulsing. Aol. Aol dead. Everyone in the room was struck with fear when the chicken was killed by the poison, but they couldn't help but shudder and subconsciously want to run away after the sheep was passed away. Wang Shuigang felt like his whole body was falling into a frozen icy hole as he muttered with a confused look, Who the hell poisoned the stew? Who can be so ruthless to poison everyone here? Tang Xiao creased his brows and asked, Have you offended anyone recently, Mr. Wang? Wang Shuigang opened his mouth but was at a loss as for how to answer the inquiry. He had a big business. Even if he hadn't offended anyone recently, he probably had offended many people in the past. For those who were in the business world, and particularly the ones who made their businesses turn into a major entity, it was simply impossible to stay pure and never offend anyone. Tang Xiao was silent for a moment and then slowly said, Call the police. This is too serious an incident. I'm afraid we'll be too nervous to have an appetite to eat again if we can't find the real culprit of this poisoning. A grateful look could be seen filling Wang Shuigang's eyes as he looked at Tang Xiao and said, I'll immediately call the police now, Mr. Tang. We are very fortunate to have you among us today, else we all would have. He didn't finish his sentence, yet everyone in the luncheon hall could see it very clearly. They would have been poisoned and dead had Tang Xiao not been there today. He, he was truly everyone's savior. Chapter 849, Clues and Traces There was not even the slightest joy in Tang Xiao's heart as he faced the gratitude of the nearly 100 people. He was full of worry inwardly instead. Others may be thinking about who was the real culprit behind this poisoning, but what he was speculating about was whether this drunken dragon powder was concocted by cultivators. If so, then the person must be an evil cultivator, someone who was proficient in poison. Mr. Tang, Wang Tao Tang Xiao never liked meddling in anyone's business. Although he was furious towards those who did this ruthless poisoning, he didn't want to have a conflict with them before he was sure of their identity. It was because if they were not evil cultivators but good people, or if they were evil cultivators but he couldn't get rid of them at once there would be no end of troubles haunting him in the future. He didn't fear them himself, but he still had family members and friends. It would be nearly impossible to protect all the people he cared about from the attack of these people. Zhang Xinyue's complexion was slightly pale. Only now did she feel glad that Tang Xiao came to Qinglin County. She wouldn't have rushed from Shanghai to this place otherwise, meaning she would not have replaced her older sister, Zhang Xinya, in attending today's luncheon. It could be said that Tang Xiao's emergence in this place today had not only saved her life, but also saved her sister's life. 
At present, she hurriedly spoke after seeing Tang Xiao was about to leave, Mr. Wang. I've accomplished my job for this opening sale today, so I'm going to take my leave first. With that said, she didn't give a chance to Wang Shuegang to reply and hurriedly chased Tang Xiao to leave together. At the moment, Wang Shuegang was truly flustered and yet also furious inside. He didn't know who was so vicious that they wished to kill him and the guests, those who he had invited to purchase his villa real estate, using poison. He didn't care about the departure of Zhang Xinyue, but couldn't help but feel restless and more worried with Tang Xiao leaving. Could you please stay, Mr. Tang? Wang Shuegang hurriedly pursued and stopped Tang Xiao at the entrance of the hall. Mr. Wang, the friendship between us has yet to reach the point where I can risk my life and die for you. It's obvious that someone or some people want to drive you to the edge and to your death, or even keep you from turning over from your fall forever. This is nothing but a mortal enmity, it will never be a good thing if I involve myself in it. If you heed my advice, you can keep doing your business, but you should find a safe place to hide. I know that I shouldn't get you involved in this matter, Mr. Tang, said Wang Shuegang bitterly. But I don't have any means to hide. Besides, I can't just hide all the time since these people will definitely use all means possible to exterminate me if they really want to. Then sell your industries as quickly as possible, if you're really that scared, then bring your money to distant places, answered Tang Xiao. I can't and won't say anything else, but for the sake of your son's willingness to take me to Qingcheng Monastery, I'll tell you another thing out of goodwill. This drunken dragon powder is not something ordinary people can concoct, so there must be some cultivators behind it. Moreover, the refining of this powder is extremely demanding, it's nearly impossible for money to measure its value. Therefore, it's absolutely impossible to make such a heinous poisoning incident like today if you and the other party truly have no mortal enmity. All right, I've already said what I had to say, so I'll take my leave. Cultivators? Deep fear suffused inside Wang Shuegang's eyes. He wouldn't be this afraid had it been ordinary people who did these deeds. He would just relinquish his business affairs for some time and take asylum in Qingcheng Monastery to avoid them. But, if it was cultivators, there was a possibility that Qingcheng Monastery's people couldn't protect him if he were to run and hide there. He would even involve and implicate the monastery. I'll go to a very far away place. A resolute look appeared in Wang Shuegang's face. He was never one who liked to be tousled, nor be played at by anyone in society, no matter who they were. Since there was a possibility that the culprits were cultivators, he made up his mind to go to a distant place. No matter how much someone owed money, it was all nothing if they die. May I request another thing from you, Mr. Tang? You can rest assured that I'm not going to involve you in my problem. I'd just like to ask you to bring my son to Qingcheng Monastery and entrust him to my big brother. It's a request you don't need to mention, I'll take him there, answered Tang Xiao. But Wang Tao, who followed him outside, immediately shook his head and said aloud, I'm not leaving, Dad. Not a chance. I must go with you now that someone wants to harm us. Pipe down, stupid, yelled Wang Shuegang angrily. If the culprits are cultivators, then you'll die in vain staying with me. But I'll have nothing to worry about if you are to stay in Qingcheng Monastery. I'm going to deal with our family's businesses as fast as possible and do as much as I can, as well as quickly gather funds and escape from this place. I'll naturally find the way to contact you and pick you up later once I settle down. I, Wang Tao still wanted to speak but Tang Xiao stopped him. Your father is right. Nothing good can happen if you stay, you'll be just a burden, said Tang Xiao. Let's just go. We'll head to Qingcheng Monastery first so we won't affect the things your father must do. A few minutes later, Tang Xiao and the others came to the parking lot. His brows immediately creased when he saw Mo Ao, Jin Shi, and everyone else. Before he fed the soup to the chicken and sheep and waited for the result, he secretly contacted Moa's team to go to the kitchen to find any suspicious people who did the poisoning. Now that all of them had come back, it indicated that they already got a result. We caught two of them, boss. 
Emo Og quickly glanced at Wang Tao and Zhang Xinyue and then said in a low voice. Where are they? asked Tang Xiao. Emo Og pointed to the window and answered, they are inside and all of them are martial artists. Judging from today's society, it could be said that they are two martial arts masters. Tang Xiao nodded in response and came to the front of the car. He opened the door and saw two tied-up middle-aged men in the back seat, bleeding out seven orifices and no longer breathing. He died, muttered Mo Ao to himself in disbelief. Tang Xiao quickly examined the two men's bodies and finally concluded that they committed suicide by taking poison. However, considering that they had been tightly tied up, that meant that they had already put the poison pill in their mouth in advance. They would simply bite the poison pill to commit suicide once they were caught. It spelled big trouble in and of itself and gave a headache to Tang Xiao as he watched the two bodies. If he knew that he would come across such bad luck, he wouldn't have agreed to attend the opening ceremony of this villa complex today. Behind him, Wang Tao and Zhang Xinyue watched the two bodies in the car with a fearful look. One was a second-generation upstart, and the other one was a small business owner, so where had they seen such a murder case where the bodies bled from its every hole? If Tang Xiao, Mo Ao, and their group were not in this place at this moment, the two of them might have already run away in deep fear. T Tang Tang Xiao, what should we do? Zhang Xinyue subconsciously held Tang Xiao's arm and asked in a shiver. Don't worry. These two dead men are nothing but pawns, whereas the chief mastermind behind the scenes hasn't yet appeared. Tang Xiao patted her back and said, If anything, I'll assign Au to escort you back to the hotel first to meet with your older sister, and then, you'll leave Qinglin County immediately. Zhang Xinyue's emotions calmed down. But she suddenly realized what she was doing and quickly took out her mobile phone to dial Zhang Xinyue's cell number. After some time speaking with her and learning that her sister, Zhang Xinyue, was all right, she quickly hung up. I can't go back to meet with my sis now, Tang Xiao. Why? Tang Xiao was confused. Today's incident is too bizarre and fishy. Even so far, we have yet to figure out the real identity of the murderer behind the scene is, said Zheng Xinyue. They didn't seem to fear that things will go out of control, nor were they afraid of any consequences. They might be trying to kill Wang Xuegong, but what about me? I think I'll follow you first to make sure of things. Tang Xiao frowned and said, but your older sister there. Outsiders have yet to find out the situation with my sis, interrupted Zhang Xinyue. They won't keep an eye on the hotel as long as I don't go back, and I'll notice my sister to leave Qinglin County to return to Shanghai now to wait for me back there. But I must go back to sis Xinyue, interjected Zhang Xiaoyu all of a sudden. Tang Xiao pondered for a moment before he nodded and said, What you said is reasonable, so I'll arrange for Gu Tao and Zhang Ju to escort this last to gather with your older sister and leave for Shanghai. Since you insist on staying with me, you can use your presence to attract people's eyes and ears. However, we'll go deeper into the Qingcheng Mountain. Can your untrained physique endure the travel? Tang Xiao's arrangement was much to Zhang Xinyue's satisfaction and she replied with all seriousness, as long as you can endure it, I definitely can do it. All right, it's decided then, said Tang Xiao. Gu Tao, Zhang Ju, you two are to immediately escort her away and you must not stay in Qinglin County for a long time. Xue Sha, Hei Xiong, find a way to deal with these two dead bodies. Do not leave any traces behind. The four men accepted their orders and cupped their fists. Half an hour later, Tang Xiao's group of five halted their pace at the top of the mountain peak at the outermost part of Qingqing Mountain. Tang Xiao lit up a cigarette, and just as he took two puffs, two figures flashed and appeared before him lightning fast. We've disposed of the two dead bodies, boss. And absolutely no traces of them remain, reported Xue Sha while cupping his fists. Tang Xiao nodded in response and looked at Zhang Xinyue and Wang Tao, who was panting and gasping for breath at this moment. Then he said, let's rest here temporarily. We'll continue to hurry along the road in 20 minutes. 
Wang Tao, can you tell me how long will it take us to get to the Qingcheng Monastery? Wang Tao gasped for breath twice and looked at the mountain range northward before saying, if we traverse up the mountain pathway, we should arrive at Qingcheng Monastery by at least tomorrow evening. I know another path, but we may encounter some dangers if we take it since that path is deeper in the forest with a lot of wild animals. Ordinary beasts are not a threat to us. Rest assured, said Tang Xiao indifferently. Wang Tao recalled Tang Xiao's another identity, so he nodded and continued, I don't have such worries with you here, big brother Tang. The thing is, we didn't prep water and food before we hiked up, so my only concern is the trouble we'll encounter due to hunger and thirst on the way there. <laughs> Tang Xiao chuckled but no longer spoke after shaking his head. Whether we carry water and food are not of not our concern as it makes no difference to us whatsoever, said Moa gruffly. Besides, in our eyes, this deep forest is full of fruits everywhere that can fill our stomach. Chapter 850, Tragic and Miserable The mountain peaks in the surroundings of Qingcheng Mountain were evergreen in all seasons. The peaks stood straight in a ring-like shape, like city boulevards with verdant and green trees deserving its resounding reputation of a Qingcheng, the serene and secluded land under heaven. Hiking up and down through the mountains on rough and bumpy pathways proved to be quite hard with everyone having to walk more slowly due to some people in the group being ordinary people, while the howls of wild animals came drifting in the air from time to time as night fell. Wang Tao had repeatedly trekked up the mountain to Qingcheng Monastery and had no worries about the situation in the mountains at night. Zhang Xinyue, on the other hand, had been living in a big city since her childhood and had never spent a night in an old forest of a deep mountain, so was fearful and restless. You, can you just stop following me all the time? Just as Tang Xiao exited the diagonally narrow mountain path, he found Zhang Xinyue following him closely as if she was afraid that Tang Xiao would leave her alone. Zhang Xinyue picked up her pace faster and used the faint moonlight in the sky to reach out and grab Tang Xiao's arm. She restlessly watched the surrounding and asked anxiously, Where are you going? Don't leave me. Excuse me, Mississippi. Can I not take my time to relieve myself? Tang Xiao forced a smile and said, Just stay here with everyone. I'll be back soon. Uh... Zhang Xinyue's face blushed, but fortunately, it was night and no one else was present. After rushing back to Mo Ah's group, she picked up a fist-sized stone from the ground and tightly gripped it. After a while, Tang Xiao returned to the group as he looked at the dark road in front before saying in a deep voice, Let's go trekking up the road. We'll try to hurry to our destination earlier. Can't we have some more rest, Big Brother Tang? Wang Tao grinned albeit bitterly, and said, We are kinda too tired to keep trekking up the mountain. Tang Xiao was silent for a while. Then he turned to look at Zhang Xinyue and said in a deep voice, Promise me one thing. What is it? Zhang Xinyue was puzzled. We came to this mountain now, but you must forget whatever you see and hear after you leave Qingqing Mountain. Never mention anything that happened here to anyone, said Tang Xiao. Do you need to keep it a secret? Zhang Xinyue wondered. Ah, uh, that's right. You said that you must go and handle some matters in Qingcheng Mountain's Qingcheng Monastery. What exactly do you want to do there? Also, is this Qingcheng Monastery the likes of those sects in ancient times? There's no need for you to know these matters for the time being, said Tang Xiao. If you promise to keep this a secret, I'll take you there, but if you cannot, Jinxia will send you back now. Zhang Xinyue looked hesitant but then helplessly replied, All right, I promise you. Tang Xiao nodded and quickly motioned to Mo Ao. The latter then reached out to grab Wang Tao's shoulder and dashed toward the front, whereas Tang Xiao quickly caught Zhang Xinyue's slender waist and flashed along the path to the front. Ah! Being embraced by Tang Xiao, the masculine scent emanating from him made Zhang Xinyue's heart beat faster. She couldn't help but exclaim when she saw the scenery on both sides retreating fast and blurring as they moved. Don't make a fuss, just hold me tight. Tang Xiao kept running and picked up his pace faster. 
After a short time being flustered, Zhang Xinyue's stunning face was full of disbelief as she was shocked to see the quickly retreating and blurring scenery on both sides of her vision, as well as the whistling sound of the wind in her ears. Are they superhuman, or martial arts masters? Judging from her sight, Zhang Xinyue could tell that their journey's speed was fast to the extreme. She could see that even sprinters at the national level wouldn't be able to sprint as fast as Tang Xiao and Mo Ao. Four hours later, when Tang Xiao and the rest stopped at a mountain peak, they could see a blazing flame in front soaring to the sky, while countless chirping, roars, and howls of various wild animals and birds came from the distance in the forested mountain. What could be happening in front, Wang Tao? Tang Xiao frowned as his sharp eyes had seen some buildings being engulfed in the raging fire, and he even had a faintly bad premonition. Wang Tao himself was utterly dizzy as Mo Ab put him down. He heaved a few times before slowly turning his vision upward. When he saw the fire in front, he shouted in alarm, Heavens! That's the outer hall of Qingcheng Monastery in front. Damn it, how did it catch fire in the dead of the night? Who are you? Suddenly, Mo Ao shouted as his burly physique flashed toward the bushes on the left suddenly. The dagger in his hand reflected the shining moonlight that pierced through the slits between the branches and leaves as cold light flashed and pierced the left shoulder of a lurker. Enemy attack, screamed the ambusher, followed by several silhouettes that flashed around the bushes. At the same time, Mo Ao's big hand caught the lurker's throat like a steel pincher. Whoosh! In that instant, Mo Ao flashed and returned to Tang Xiao's side. Tang Xiao looked at the throat gripped man dressed in black clothes and asked, Who are you? Cackle, cackle. A few strange noises came out of the man's throat. In just a few seconds after the three other men in black attire appeared around him, blood seeped out of his mouth as his breath weakened and he finally died while being grabbed by the neck in Mo Ao's hand. Suicide by poison, huh? Cold light suffused in Tang Xiao's eyes. It was pretty much ludicrous for him to see this. It was very unexpected and bizarre that there was someone who could be so powerful and had the ability to train such a death squad in today's society. Who the fuck are you, bastards? One of the man in black attire, who stood across Tang Xiao, asked with a saber in his hand. Tang Xiao squinted and coldly snorted, Humph, it is I who wants to ask who the hell you are. What exactly happened to Qingcheng Monastery in front? The man in black stared at Tang Xiao and said, I suppose you're not a member of the Qingcheng Monastery. If so, you had better scram, don't meddle in our business. We'll flood the Qingcheng Monastery with blood today and anyone who dares to meddle with us must be buried along with them. Washing the Qingcheng Monastery with blood? Tang Xiao's expression changed and his figure flashed and instantly appeared in front of the man in black. His hand grabbed the man's neck as he instantly released his longsword to stab the chests of the other two. Oh, take out the poison pill in his mouth. Roger. Mo Og quickly executed Tang Xiao's order and pulled out a thin silk thread from the black-clothed man's teeth. The thread was connected to a dark green poison capsule the size of a grain of rice. Tang Xiao sealed the acupoints of the man in black and interrogated him with a cold expression, I give you one last chance. Spit out your identity and why you want to wash the Qingcheng school with blood. The man could clearly sense that he had lost control over his body. He even lost the ability to move his fingers even though he exerted his strength to attempt it. The fear on his face, however, died out in a flash. He even talked back harshly, you wanna squeeze out an answer from me? Fucking dream on. You'll know who our leaders are later, and that will be the time when you can't survive or die. Tang Xiao flipped his hand and sent a stream of qi into the man in black's body while also using a sealing art on him as he then said, then let me give you the taste of when you can't survive or die first. Arg, a heart-rending, painful scream came from the man's mouth. The body he had lost control over was twitching and trembling due to a pain that he could never imagine experiencing even in his dreams. I know how to refine medicine. Even I can pull the dying out from the gates of hell, scornfully said Tang Xiao with a grim tone. 
I had once measured that a human can live for at least seven days while experiencing this kind of pain, while the medicine I can refine will add three days more, so you'll live up to ten days. Hence, you can opt not to answer my question, but be ready to face the next ten days in your most difficult time of endurance. Ten days. The man in black could tell that he wouldn't be able to withstand that for a second. Such an enormous feeling of pain was as though coming from his soul, causing his consciousness to nearly collapse. What exactly was this pain that could make death much better than being alive? Only at this time did the black-clothed man feel such a sensation for the first time in his life. Tang Xiao took out a cigarette without him realizing his own action. He fell into thought before flicking the cigarette toward Jean Shi's hand and then said, Give it thought carefully and if you want to tell me the answer, then blink your eyes a few times. Eh, you blink so fast? Your will is kinda laughable it seems. With that said, he reached out and stroked some beats on the black-clothed man's body. At the moment when the man's body gradually ceased convulsing and the pain on his face eased, he detachedly ordered, spit it out now. Else, you'll have the next opportunity like this thirty minutes later. Can you kill me immediately if I tell you, hurriedly replied the man in black. How interesting. A death squad who are bent on death, huh? Tang Xiao nodded and said, All right, I promise you to have a clean, quick death. The man in black looked relaxed and quickly said, Our leaders are cultivators. I don't know his school lineages, nor do I know where he learned his ability from, but he's good at using poison. They brought us to Qingcheng Mountain to exact their revenge on the Qingcheng school. Words have it that the Qingcheng monastery killed for brothers of our two leaders. Revenge? Tang Xiao frowned. He never expected that for the red silk flower. First he would encounter a poisoning incident at the luncheon banquet of the Golden Goblet Emperor, Gu's Villa Complex's opening sale ceremony. And now he even came across an incident where the Qingcheng Monastery was getting revenge enacted on it. Seems like I have to protect the Qingcheng Monastery. The most important thing is to keep Wang Tao's uncle alive. Else? It would be very difficult for me to have a breakthrough in my cultivation in the near future if the red silk flower were to fall in the hands of other cultivators by accident. Tang Xiao inhaled deeply before he sent a slap to kill the man in black. Then he said in a heavy voice, Shui Sha, Hei Xiong, you two are to stay here to protect their safety. We are going to rush forward to take a look at the situation. I don't want to stay here. I want to follow you, shouted Zhang Xinyue immediately with a change in expression. My uncle and cousin are in the Qingcheng Monastery, Big Brother Tang, interjected Wang Tao hurriedly. I gotta go with you there. No can do. You're all ordinary people. Involving yourselves in danger is a big no. Tang Xiao shook his head and said, Did you see those four men just now? We easily killed them and for people to die in this kind of danger is much more normal than chickens dying here. What did you say? screamed Zhang Xinyue. You, you just killed them? The light was too dim see in the dark night and Zhang Xinyue only saw those four men fall, but was unaware that they were already dead. Don't you forget your promise to me before. You must forget everything that happened in Qingcheng Mountain after you leave this place and always keep your mouth shut, said Tang Xiao. With that said, he took M O O, Jin Shi, and Xue Sha along with him. Their three silhouettes flashed lightning fast towards Qingcheng Monastery. After leaving the line of sight of Zhang Xinyue and Wang Tao, the four men floated in the air and spent a minute to arrive at a spot less than 100 meters away from the burning outer pavilion of Qingcheng Mountain.